All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, platelet and coagulation factor pathology. We'll divide them into three major categories. Quantitative disorders, essentially problem with the amount of platelets. Qualitative disorder, uh, in which the quality is bad in probably the receptors. And coagulopathies, which are essentially clotting disorders. Uh, quantitative disorders are essentially defined as when there is a platelet amount less than 100,000 per microliter. But the bleeding will begin when it's around 20 to 30,000. There are two major categories of quantitative uh, disorders, decreased production or increased destruction. In decreased production, you have a plastic anemia, which is essentially a pancytopenia, meaning that all three blood cells are decreased, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Leukemias can downregulate platelet amount. Then you have a congenital disorder called TAR, standing for thrombocytopenia absent radius. And it, it's exactly what the name suggests. You're born without the radius and you have a thrombocytopenia. Vitamin B12 and uh, folate are needed for nuclear synthesis. And their deficiency will affect essentially our blood cells. In increased uh, destruction, you have different disorders such as ITP, DIC, HELP, TTP and HIT. We'll talk about them now. ITP is uh, immune uh, thrombocytopenic purpura. Purpura is when the bleeding is more than 3 millimeters in diameter, and the thesis refers to bleeding of unknown origin. These are two signs usually seen in ITP. There are two categories here. Acute, which is usually in children, most likely after a viral infection, viral respiratory infection. And it's chronic in um, adults, especially in females with SLE. What is uh, characteristics is that you will see a prolonged bleeding, but the PT, prothrombin time, and PTT, partial uh, thromboplastin time, are normal because the clotting factors are not affected. DIC stands for Disseminated Intravascular Coagulation. This is actually a secondary disorder, meaning that there is a primary disease that causes it. The causes can be obstetrical complications, such as uh, amniotic fluid embolism, in which the placental squamous cells can work as tissue factors, initiating the extrinsic pathway. The, it can be liver diseases, which can include hepatic failure, tumors, such as pancreatic tumor, lung tumor, or um, acute myelogenous uh, leukemia, especially M3, which we'll talk in hematology about, can cause uh, DIC. Physical injury, it's only if it's an excessive massive tissue injury, such as if there is a heavily burn or invas severe invasive surgery. Infections, the one that you should always remember is Neisserial infection, Neisseria meningitis infection in Waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome. And all types of shock can essentially lead to DIC, especially septic shock, which we will talk about uh, in the shock videos. What is uh, usually seen? There is a prolonged bleeding. The PTT is prolonged. Why? Because it's used constantly. The PT, same. All the clotting factors are used. This is disseminated, meaning that it's diffused. It's throughout your whole body. And the fibrogen will be low because as all other coagulation factors will be low. But the only thing that will be high will be the D-dimers that you might find in the urine. TTP is thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. Here, usually the problem is when you are, have a deficient or defected ADAM TS13. It is a protein that uh, essentially cleaves von Willebrand factor polymers into uh, monomers. And if there is a deficiency, there will be a lot of excessive coagulation. This disease is uh, very rare, but it's uh, very characteristic of its pentad. It has fa five famous problems. Neurological problems and renal problems are due to the excessive thrombosis and coagulopathies uh, and coagulations that will cause ischemia. Ischemia to brain can cause, for instance, headache or even stroke. Fever is usually caused by ischemia, which can, can eventually release tumor necrotic factor and interleukin-1, which will go to your hypothalamus and uh, increase the set point. Fever will be discussed in a separate video. Thrombocytopenia due to excessive coagulations. And uh, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia will be due to the formation of these uh, thrombi will be very sharp and as red blood cells uh, will pass through they will physically injure them 
and by now you will call them schistiocytes or helmet cells because they resemble a helmet, a German helmet. What you will see in lab is prolonged bleeding, PT and PTT will be normal as clotting factors are not affected. Reticulocytosis will be due to a compensatory synthesis of um, red blood cells and schistiocytosis due to the physical injury. Heparin induced uh, thrombocytopenia is usually due to, as you remember we had platelet factor 4 in alpha granules of platelets in which heparin can bind to. This will, uh, heparin will work as a heptin and bind to it. After this the IgG will come and bind to it and as it passes through the spleen it will get stuck in uh, Billroth's cords and will get engulfed by the splenic macrophages or it can also activate platelets to cause platelet release and aggregation causing excessive uh, thrombosis so excessive thrombosis will cause further thrombocytopenia. So in qualitative, disor uh, qualitative disorders we have von Willebrand's disease in which there is a deficiency or defected von Willebrand factor. Bernard Soulier, in which uh, the GP1B, glycoprotein 1B, is defected or deficient, and Glantzmann's thromboasthenia. All of these will probably be furtherly discussed in the hematology section. So let's talk about coagulopathies. You have the congenital and the acquired ones. The congenital it can be essentially any clotting factor deficiency. But the ones that we're going to discuss will be factor 8 and factor 9 deficiency. Factor 8 is also called the hemophilia A protein because the disease it causes is hemophilia A. It's an excellent recessive disease and it's usually seen at birth, uh, usually at circumcision, there will be an excessive bleeding. Later on you can see hemarthrosis and hematoma. Hemarthrosis is uh, bleeding in joints and hematoma is extravascular bleeding. You will also see in laboratory that there is a prolonged bleeding but the platelet levels are normal because the, these are not affected but the PTT will be prolonged because PTT is in the intrinsic pathway and factor 8 is also there so that's why it will be affected. Hemophilia B is essentially the same as the hemophilia A but the difference is that it's factor 9 deficiency. Acquired problems can be liver cirrhosis and why is that important because your clotting factors and other proteins that are needed for coagulation are synthesized in the liver and if the liver fails to synthesize them then you will have excessive bleeding. And GI problems can include the ones that were discussed previously such as uh, steatorrhea and um, excessive use of antibiotics. Okay, that's it about the pathology. Thank you.